Hey everyone. Well, I'm back with some new ideas that will probably piss people off, but hopefully make them think. I don't know if these ideas are my own. I listen to so much stuff and I read so much stuff. I'm sure I just picked all this stuff up along the way, but I wanted to put it together in my own way. I was going to say my own words, but I don't have my own words. Um, this uh, this thinking that I, I... First of all, I'm a political atheist. I don't believe in left-right or anything. Um, I think people that vote along with party lines are brainwashed and are simply uncomfortable with thinking. I don't do things like that, ever. Um, I, I'm interested, really, in morality and right and wrong, um, however that can be defined, but... Politically speaking, if you're on the right or left, what you're saying is, if you're, for example, if you're on the left, you're saying, please, leftist politicians, make the police point their guns at the people on the right, and if you're on the right, you're saying the opposite. So that, as far as I'm concerned, is immoral. It's violent, it's forceful, I'm not interested in that. But I've been hearing increasingly this, uh, the, these thoughts about how, you know, life isn't fair. And, and over the last decade, couple of decades, um, I, I, I've heard these absurd things like children not allowed to play dodgeball because it's exclusionary, or children, um, let, let, let's abolish grades uh, because it's, you know, it's, it's not fair for everyone, or whatever. It, it's this, uh, this indoctrination that liberal believing people are putting on children that I believe is actually really damaging to them and I <laughs> I'll tell you why um, life doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way um, it, it doesn't I, I mean I think people who are teaching their children that yes everyone should get the same grade and everyone should no one should have to play dodgeball or whatever are actually making it so that the children are going to have quite a shock when they enter the workforce um bill gates first rule of life life isn't fair get over it that that's i, I can't think of a better piece of advice it's just it's not fair life isn't fair in nature life isn't fair in society life isn't fair i don't even know what fair means does it mean uniform among people it's, it's not fair. We're never going to be equal. And to want that, I mean, for example, even even the concept of, e of total equality is absurd. Think about it. If, if um, I'm a relatively short guy, so should I, to make myself feel better, should I cut inches off of other people somehow? Or should really attractive people, you know, mess their faces up so that I feel better about myself? I mean, it's, it's absurd. Um, and, and to think that perhaps we can homogenize the planet is it's just never going to happen and i believe that with this grades and dodgeball and such it's created a generation a lot of the younger people in their 20s and such that i know um are, are they just they're entitled they feel entitled they feel that well the, the the world owes me something this is leftist liberal thinking the world owes me something and uh someone should do something about it and first of all, the world owes you nothing, um, and that that's a harsh reality, but it's it's the truth. The world doesn't care about you. W one thing that I clearly remember from my childhood is my parents instilling in me that the, the world cares about what you can offer it. That's it. That's all it cares about. That's all people care about. If you can't offer the world anything, you're, you're not going to get ahead. You're not going to achieve anything. If you sit and feel sorry for yourself and feel entitled, nothing's ever going to work for you. What you have to do if you feel that you are owed something is you have to go out and get it. If you want something, you have to go out and get it. Envy isn't going to help you. Feeling entitled isn't going to help you. You have to go out and get whatever it is that you want. And I think also by telling people, especially children, that it's not fair, you're making them powerless. You're taking power away from children because... If something isn't fair, or if if you're telling children the game is rigged, you know everything's rigged, so don't you know you're, you're, what you're saying is don't bother, don't bother trying. Telling poor people that the game is rigged, and that life isn't is inherently not fair, but it should be, 
is you're you're telling them just don't try, don't bother trying, just stay in your station, and because if you try to move up, uh, nothing's ever going to happen. And I, I just wanted to spell the fact that I'm not a rich guy. I work two jobs, um, but I guess some people would consider me privileged because I was born in an industrialized nation, and I'm white, and I'm a man, um, and I, I don't apologize for any of those things. I have felt guilty most of my life well, for various reasons, mostly because of religion. And the the leftist liberal ideology is the, the big proponent of um, a lot of the race baiting and feminism. Um, I did not choose my parents. I did not choose my genetics. I didn't ask to be the descendant of white European conquerors. I didn't ask to be born with a penis. And I had no say in where I was born. Um, I am not guilty of the sins of the people who came before me. And I, I've seen in a lot of liberal and left-leaning organizations, you kind of have to apologize for all those things. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I had nothing it had nothing to do with me. And I, I guess, I mean, somehow me being born and being those things is affecting negatively affecting other people. I think that's absurd. I, it has nothing to do with me. What other people are doing has nothing to do with me. A lot of the liberal thinking, like I just said, is just it's just guilt. It's guilt and it's it's uh paralyzing people. For example, when people attack rich people. Now, first of all, this reminds me of the ridiculous conversations I used to have in high school when people would say bands would sell out to sell more records. And maybe they did. I don't know. Maybe the band sat down and said, hey, you know, we're not doing so well, so let's uh, let's change our style a little and make a lot of money. As if you wouldn't do exactly the same thing. Of course you would. Of course you would. As if you would not change station with rich people. Of course you would. Some rich people get rich doing underhanded things. Some rich people inherit their wealth. But a lot of them, and I know this because I work directly with, with uh, a lot of rich people, work really hard. They travel a lot. They're away from their families a lot. They put in really long work weeks to get rich. Either they, they did it one time or they still are. And, I mean, what is stopping anybody from doing that? From from going in and trying to start a business or trying to figure a way out to make more money? What What is stopping you? First of all, did, did you know that if you live in an industrialized nation, you're considered rich by the rest of the world? We're in the top, all of us, even the middle class and poor in industrialized nations like the United States are, are, are with it. I think we're in the top 8% of the richest people in the world. I know a lot of starving people in Africa who would trade places with you in a heartbeat. They would attack you. Oh, rich people, rich. We're, we're rich. We have enough to eat. We have food and we have electricity 24 hours a day. I don't know if people understand how how phenomenal that is. A lot of countries have electricity sporadically if they have it at all. And uh, uh, attacking, uh, you know, an African, how, how would you feel? Like if a, if a uh, I, I don't want to keep saying Africa is poor mostly because it's a uh, series of uh, really corrupt dictators, but... Uh, anybody from a from a poor country, a second or third world country, if that person came up and attacked you and said, "Oh, you, you eat all the time, and you, you know you you've got running water and you've got electricity, and you should give me that, give it all to me." What's wrong with? How would that make you feel? How would it make you feel? And also, people attacking rich people for using the government to to get them rich. You should be attacking the government, not rich people. Again, as if you wouldn't. I mean, unfortunately, eating comes first, and principles often come second. If you right now could take advantage of some sort of tax loophole or whatever and get rich, you would. Don't act like you wouldn't, because you would. Of course you would. Who wouldn't? Everybody wants a more comfortable life. But I think the the, the dangerous part of this whole equation... Besides the fact that it, it makes 
uh, the 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 liberal ideology, liberal thought, the you know the don't even try. The game is rigged. It's not fair. Blah blah blah. I think the the more dangerous, the most dangerous part of that is the fact that the generally the solution that liberals put forward is redistribution of wealth. And this is socialism, communism, and, and any other number of isms. They want government to step in and forcefully redistribute wealth. I remember the Pope earlier this year said that, oh, wealth should be redistributed. I mean, the Catholic Church is worth untold millions and millions of dollars. And of course, you know, he sits on a golden throne in his silk dresses and handmade shoes. And yeah, okay. So I want to get this straight. I want you to first th think about this, okay? Let's think about this rationally. The government takes 25 to 30 percent of your money directly. They call it taxes. They steal it out right out of your paycheck. You have no choice. Think about that. Just that. That's just one tax, your income tax. Think about having 30 percent of your money back. How much more money you would have. How much more comfortable your life would be. Now, on top of that, the government takes all the rest of, uh, it, it, there's uh, uh, something like 90, I'll, I'll post this, uh, an article below, 97 different types of taxes. Excise tax, gas tax, meals tax, taxes on goods, real estate tax, property tax, transportation taxes, tax, 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 especially in certain states in the United States. And this is true for all other countries too. I mean, it's not like uh, other industrialized nations don't have income taxes and all the rest of the taxes, but you can theorize that the government takes conservatively 40% or 50% of your money in taxes because every single thing you buy has taxes that the, the we call them hidden taxes built right into it. Imagine how much a car would cost you if you didn't have all the taxes built into every single step of of processing and manufacturing and transportation of that car and and taxes built into every single step of the dealership and things that the dealership have like permits those are taxes they call them fancy names licenses permits etc those are taxes and the tax and all that money factors into what you pay for everything you buy not just cars everything else I want you to think about it. Think about how different your life would be if you had 50% of your money back. I think a lot more starving people would attack you and say, wow, what a rich person. So what you want to happen, your solution, which some people call it socialism, what you want to happen is this organization that steals money from all of us to take more money from certain people, funnel it through its bureaucratic hell, and then spit out whatever it feels like it. Do you know how inefficient government is? Do you have, have any idea how inefficient the bureaucracy is? If you compare anything that the government does to anything that a private company can do, private company will always, the private company will always end up better. Why? Because the private company is accountable to customers. The government is not accountable to anyone. And the government, especially in the United States, continues to grow and grow and grow. And if it was allowed to steal more and more of our money via socialism, it would have even more power. And the government doesn't just give that power back. It, it Once it has it, it will keep it forever. I remember in the state I live in, the sales tax went up a couple years ago, and all I heard in these propaganda ads is, oh, this is temporary, it's temporary, it'll shore up the budget gaps. Well, guess what? The state is still bankrupt, and they haven't lowered the tax. And now they're talking about more taxes. And one other thing for liberals whose savior is big government, inflation. The Federal Reserve, which is a private bank that is in control of the United States money supply, Prints $45 billion a month, it used to be $85 billion, $45 billion a month to inject into the economy, mostly to banks, and almost all of it to Wall Street companies and conglomerates. 
the more money that's in the money supply, the less purchasing power the money you have in your pocket. Okay? That's why since the Federal Reserve was introduced and really shoved down people's throats and kind of illegally passed in 1913, the dollar has lost 97 to 98% of its purchasing power. Inflation is, and uh, Ben Bernanke, the former chairman, when asked by Ron Paul, said that inflation is a hidden tax. So, not only is the government stealing your money via taxes, it is then destroying the purchasing power of whatever money you have left. I want you to... Well, let's, let's phrase it, okay? If, if you had... Let's let's add another 10% because of inflation. You're now living off something like 40% of your income that, that you make, which means that you work a pretty significant portion over half the year for free. Rich people have nothing to do with this. Okay, rich people use government, yeah, but why are you criticizing rich people? The government is the problem. If the government wasn't there, the rich people wouldn't be able to use the government. If the, if the government did not provide legal shields for rich people and companies, such as corporations, LLCs, and other fictional entities, rich people and companies would not be able to take advantage of consumers. And I hate to tell you, but big companies, rich companies, and rich people who don't take, it, who don't take advantage of government end up being replaced by someone who will. So, I mean, it's it's... Such It's so common sense that the government is the one that's responsible for keeping you and making you poor. So why in the hell are you attacking rich people? And why the hell do you want forceful redistribution of wealth? Why would you want socialized medicine, for example? Have you seen government projects? Have you seen, for example, how the government reacted in Hurricane, uh, Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Katrina? Have you seen the, the way that FEMA failed miserably? Have you seen how slow in, in, uh, in uh, terror, you know, I, I have some word I'm looking for, but inefficient, how slow and inefficient the post office is? And you want socialized medicine? I don't want socialized medicine. I want doctors competing for my dollars. And I want the 60% plus that the government steals from me I want that back so that I can afford to pay doctors because I don't know about you, but when my life is on the line, I want the best possible care that I can get. I want, I want a, a top surgeon, and I want that person to make a lot of money, and I want that person's income to rely on doing a good job, unlike the government who has, has no incentive to do a good job because the money just keeps coming. It's not like you can't pay taxes. And another thing for any liberals who happen to be listening to this is if you give the, the government the power to socialize everything it is going to take that power and use it in such a way it what it will do what it will do is write incredibly vaguely worded laws so that it can take advantage of powers that you know you didn't authorize and that it didn't know it had that's what happens every time government takes more power they just, I mean, the, the fact that uh, the constitutionalists run around and, no, oh, they're not following the Constitution, of course they're not. Why would they? They don't, they don't care. The government's not there to serve you. It's there to serve itself and to expand its power whenever possible. So, I mean, I hate to tell you, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm a lower middle class person. And... A lot of that is because I, I have the capability of going out and starting a company if I wanted to. I just don't feel like it. Really, I have what I need, and, and I, I want to work until 5 or whatever and come home and see my family. I don't want to work 80 hours a week. I have no interest in that. And I could probably work even less and actually stay home when I'm sick and be able to go to the, to the doctor if I have a problem and not have to worry about debt and such. If some monopoly of force wasn't stealing god it only knows 40 50 60 percent of what i earn if they weren't stealing it and either keeping it for themselves or giving it to people that i did not authorize it to so all you liberals i hate to tell you this but your your ideology is keeping people powerless and it's pointing fingers at the wrong people it's a distraction 
It's race baiting. It's sexism. It's it's creating gender issues that don't need to exist. You need to focus on the thing that actually matters. And, mo and most of the problem, in, most of the problems that we face today are because of the state. Environmentalists, leftist environmentalists. Have you seen how much damage war does? I mean, you think Priuses and and efficient light bulbs are going to help that? Are you kidding me? You've got the government authorizing uh, killers to go drop depleted uranium in foreign countries. That's and this is this is the organization that you want in charge of redistributing wealth the organization that is responsible for destroying wealth and the the and also you know what what are we now 17 and a half trillion dollars in debt that's the per, that's the entity you want managing money by 2020 the debt is the debt is is uh, projected to be 25 trillion dollars there's no possible way that's ever going to be paid back. If, if so, if if I was a financial advisor and my credit cards were so horrendously overcharged that I would never ever be able to pay it back, and I just kept repeating the same behavior, would you trust me with your money? Well, the government's track record of wasting money and destroying wealth and taking away rights speaks for itself. So why in the hell would you ever advocate a system like socialism or communism? Or any other type of liberal ideology that gives that those people more power, it is beyond me. It is be, it defies common sense and reason. And ultimately, at the end of the day, if you want money, if you want to be rich, don't attack rich people. Point your fingers at the right people, the state, and then go out and get yourself the money, and the other things that you want. That's the only way you're going to get it. No one's going to give it to you. And feeling like it's not fair, you're just disempowering yourself. Thanks for listening.